Hello everyone and welcome. Ghost BSD has just had a new release. It's built on top of FreeBSD 13 stable and offers the latest Mate desktop out of the box by default. So we're going to take a look at it now. GhostBSD promises a simple desktop-oriented operating system with common software already installed and configured to make a novice entry into the world of FreeBSD as easy as possible in addition to in-house GUI administration tools. Bold claims that beg to be verified for sure. Let's boot up the install ISO on QMU and find out. And here it's bootstrapping. Let's hit enter to load the kernel and the configured modules. And uh, it should now load the live environment into the uh, swap-based mem disk. Takes about three gigabytes of RAM. So the minimum required is four gigabytes, according to the manual. We have eight gigabytes uh, configured, so that should be plenty. So everything should be running from RAM. Let's use the uh, Intel graphics subsystem to boot the Mate desktop. And let's go to the control center here, go to displays and configure for 720p so we can fit the entire desktop on your screen. And next, let's go ahead and install GhostBSD. So English is correct. We're using an English keyboard, a generic 105 key PC is fine here. I'm in the, an American time zone, Los Angeles. So we're Pacific time zone. We'll do the full disk configuration as the default. We've got 128 gig QEMU hard disk. It proposes a uh, pool name of zroot, that's fine. Two gigs of swap is fine. Let's do the free BSD bias loader only and uh, give the administrator a root password. Let's enter it a second time to make sure we type correctly. My real name is Steven. We'll call the host name Casper, why not? Casper the friendly ghost. I'll give myself a password for my user account and for today, I'd like to choose Bash as my shell, born again shell. And off we are to the installation, which uh, what it does is it creates the ZFS pool, all the mount points, and installs all the packages for the uh, basic install. So now it's Done that, and now it's unmounting the ZFS mount points and asks for a restart. Let's do that. And uh, hopefully, when we next boot up, we're booting into a freshly installed GhostBSD system. There it is. Let's go ahead and uh, go through the boot up process. And there we are, Casper, like the M Display Manager, which is a good choice, I think. Let's fix the screen resolution again, as we did before. Let's select 720p and let's keep this configuration. Close. And uh, let's change the appearance a little bit. So we got Vimix, Vimix Dark, Vimix Light. I'll choose Vimix Dark here. For the background, I'm in the Seattle area, so I'll choose Seattle as the desktop. That looks nice. Uh, let's see what else we can do here while we're in the control center. Uh, let's turn off the display sleep. Since this is a demo, let's make sure time and date. Oh, time and Date. Uh, the service is unknown. Yes, I think that applet assumes systemd. Probably. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
So that can't work uh, because we're not on a system D system, I believe. So, oh well. Um, let's check and see if the time is synchronized by going to time.is. It looks like our time is exact, so that's all good. So time synchronization works anyway. No problem, just a little blemish there. Okay, let's open up a terminal. Let's make it a little bigger, move this window around. Okay, first things first, let's become root. Sudo is installed by default. Let's take a look at etsyrc.conf and see what's enabled. So ZFS is enabled, NTP daemon is enabled. So uh, we've got printing through cups, empty firewall, firewall daemon. So it looks like we've got all the daemons and services enabled that we need. Let's take a look at uh, how things are mounted here. So the root top level uh, pool mount is zroot root default. So that's um, our top level mount. So let's um, turn uh, the list snapshots equals on for the zroot zpool with this command. And let's list our existing snapshots. There shouldn't be any. So of type snapshot. No data sets available yet, so no snapshots are available yet. Let's create the first snapshot um, as base with ZFS snapshot zroot slash root slash default at base underscore install, which is the name of our snapshot, the base install. So you can see that took no time at all. The power of ZFS. So, uh, Let's uh, check out the uh, ghostbsd.conf file, which lists um, the uh, package overlay from the ghostbsd project. So it pulls the packages in from there on top of the freebsd stable packages. So running the stable generic kernel. So we haven't uh, compiled our custom kernel, but we can because we have the clang uh, C compiler available. Also Python 3.8.12 is also available. So that's good. Got a uh, pretty good system. To update, to check for any updates or patches, uh, they recommend we use the update station. So no update available. This computer is up to date. All right. So yeah, so unlike FreeBSD, you want to use the, uh, the GUI tool on GhostBSD. Let's check for any security uh, alerts. Package audit-f shows zero problems and zero installed packages. Looks like we're healthy and good to go. So let's proceed by uh, installing a couple of packages. Package install NeoFetch and LibreOffice. Let's get a basic workstation going here. Let's go ahead, say yes with installing 53 packages. So as usual, it first has to fetch or download the packages, all 53 of them. And when, that, when, when that's done, it extracts and then installs all these packages. And uh, it's just about done with that. And there we go. It includes some extra instructions how to use uh, Open JDK 11, the uh, fonts, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we won't mess with that today. Uh, in the interest of brevity, we'll continue. And uh, I'll leave that to you uh, in your experimentation. So under applications, we've got the usual MATE, um, tools and utilities, um, the graphics, graphics we have I of Mate, Shotwell, LibreOffice Draw, Internet, we have got Firefox and Transmission BitTorrent Client. That's a solid choice. So we've got uh, Document Viewer, LibreOffice under Office, Rhythm Box, VLC Media Player under Sound and Video, System Tools, pretty standard 
uh, Mate system tools, nothing unusual there. Under system, I uh, got the hardware preferences. So we saw most of these already with the control panel. Under administration, we've got the GhostBSD software station and update station here. So under software station, uh, this is what it looks like. It's basically a nice GUI where you can uh, choose additional software packages that you'd like to install. They're all uh, organized in, uh, in groups, descriptive categories. So yeah, you can use that if you'd like to uh, install additional packages. I like the, the uh, terminal, the shell instead. Control Center, we already have seen, we're running Mate, the latest Mate 1.26, copyright 2022. So as of this video, that is the latest Mate. Let's do a quick NeoFetch. So yes, we're running GhostBSD 22.01.12, which has just been released a couple of days ago. Kernel is FreeBSD 13 stable, running Bash, Adwaita theme and icons, Mate Terminal. Ah, uh, yes, and of course, we're this is a ZFS system, so that's RAM hungry for performance reasons and stability. So we've got 1.8 gigabytes out of 8 gigabytes uh, used. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, homepage. It's ghostbsd.org. It's the project's homepage. A simple, elegant desktop BSD operating system is what they promise. So far, it certainly seems that way. So simplicity is a goal with uh, Mate and curated OS packages. It's elegant, uses GDK environment. And uh, it's based on FreeBSD code, FreeBSD 13 stable. We're running the latest ISO here, 22.01.12. It's got a vibrant community uh, in the form of forums. Um, it's got either hundreds or maybe over a thousand posts per forum category. So uh, fairly active considering the size of this project. It's not the biggest, but yeah, um, you've got the community. You've also got a wiki and they're in the process of migrating to Sphinx. So you can read all about that. Uh, but yes, they do have a wiki existing, uh, including the manuals and so on and so forth. Um, let's take a look here at the left column. Let's click on manuals. So you've got the frequently asked questions, installation guide, how-to books, hardware supported list, very important, especially with FreeBSD. Hardware compatibility is always an issue lately with BSD. It's just the way it is. Um, so you can check your compatibility and uh, go through this installation guide. I found it very handy. Uh, let's see here. Um, you can contribute. There's the store they have, their donors, I guess Hall of Fame. Here is where you can donate. So you can become a sponsor. You can do a user donation. They're using PayPal and in Canadian dollars, and you can do a PayPal subscription. Different values per month, uh, one, one full year subscription, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so strongly encourage you to consider donating uh, if you'd like to uh, support this project. I think it's worthy of your consideration. Certainly impressed with it so far. Uh, very polished. So um, let's say we want to go back to our as installed um, system. And uh, we can do that with ZFS rollback, like so. And that's how fast it is to roll back using ZFS. So let's reboot and see if we're back to the as installed 
uh, system configuration and, and state. So I'm expecting when we're back up that we will no longer have LibreOffice or NeoFetch installed. So let's see if the uh, ZFS system is working as expected. All right, it's coming back up again using a virtio QEMU virtual machine. And let me log in to LightDM. And we're back. Let's check the applications. So yeah, we're back to uh, the as installed application package set, as expected. Uh, let's check uh, if NeoFetch is still installed. Uh, NeoFetch, command not found. Okay, so we've, we've rolled back to the as installed system. So there we go. Um, that is GhostBSD, the latest ISO. And uh, hopefully that was a useful uh, quick whirlwind tour for you. For my hardware at least, FreeBSD and its ilk take much more fiddling to get working, if at all, than say Linux. So I appreciate what GhostBSD is trying to accomplish by building on top of a rock solid base and providing a very polished installation experience, as well as administration tools to get you started on your BSD journey very quickly. So. Two solid thumbs up from me, even with that NTP applet blemish, which should be fixable. As always, thanks so much for watching, liking, and commenting. It really helps with the algorithm and supports the creation of more of these videos. And with that, hope to see you next time.